Good all. I hope we all are safe and sound. Today, as we speak, uh, today it's uh, my lecture number 42, which is in continuation of the previous case studies I have imparted. These things, what I'm doing for the benefit of all mariners world over, is to take or to learn the lesson basis which lots of lapses which have taken place so far and in return it has basically in return it has basically you know come to a kind of a calamity of collusion pollution and even injury to the person on board now basis uh, all those things what i've imparted it in it actually warrants us as far as our due diligence and prudence which shall be exercised towards the safety of navigation. So we begin with the lecture number 42. This is MAIVK study. The collision which took place between two container vessels in the South China Sea, just approximately uh, north east, uh, northeast or northeast of uh, Hotspra, Singapore Straits. Uh, one, one vessel was coming out, the other vessel was entering. And furthermore, the thing which we should also be very careful of, you know, the constraints. Like in this particular case, the collision in the South China Sea took place uh, between the vessels in the restricted visibility. So, I would ask all of you to kindly uh, like and subscribe my channel with a bell icon so you keep, uh, you, you get an update as in how I broadcast. Uh, any of the latest uh, lectures on the subject matter under my banner of Marine Quest Solutions. Thank you in advance. So, the two container vessels, the first one is ACS Hibiscus. She is, uh, you know, her pictorial uh, thing has been posted here just to give you a little bit uh, outline of it, how does the vessel looks like, and she is a Panama registered vessel. The second vessel, in question is Hyundai Discovery. Uh, we'll go down the rung and look at all the particulars of both the vessels. So the second vessel uh, the, on the subject matter, which was also involved in the collision, uh, was Hyundai Discovery. And this particular incident took place on 11th December 2011. The damages which were sustained by both the vessels, in first case ACS Hibiscus, uh, you can see the damage to her bow almost fully ruptured and gone. Luckily, there was no uh, casualty to the crew. It was, it is, but it is construed as a serious marine casualty. Now, the damage sustained to the second vessel in question is the Hyundai Discovery that is on her port side number two water ballast tank that is you know on the port side and the second one we'll see here the sec other damage which was sustained to the vessel Hyundai Discovery was on port side accommodation section. Now we come to the particulars of ACS Hibiscus <coughs> and Hyundai Discovery during this uh, accident. The vessel's name, first vessel, ABS Hibiscus, second ABS, uh, Hyundai Discovery. The flag, uh, ABS Hibiscus registered in Panama and Hyundai Discovery, uh, UK flagship. Classification Society, Nippon and NKK, uh, that is for uh, ACS Hibiscus and for Hyundai Discovery, Lloyd's registered. IMO number 9159141 for the ABS Hibiscus and 9085764 for Hyundai Discovery. The length overall for ACS Hibiscus is 193 meters and the length overall for Hyundai Discovery 274.67 meters. Now, the few things which I actually, when I was going through the case study, which I could not find a reason why, you know, few things could have not been uh, 
you know, put together in this report of MAIB. I am very skeptical to find out this particular thing which I have highlighted. The minimum safe manning, that is the minimum safe manning, the minimum safe manning certification, it says unknown. And that is the reason I have put a sign of interrogation. Probably there might be some reason, but when both the flag states, because this particular inspection was done by both the flag states, but there were some constraints, we'll come down, we'll talk about it as we go through the next slides. Uh, so, when I'm talking about the documentation point of view, the, it says minimum safe, uh, minimum safe manning says unknown for both the vessels. So, that is the reason I'm a bit skeptical. Nevertheless, I'm not here to point a finger at anybody uh, or neither am I prejudiced. I'm just trying to state the facts of the matter. However, uh, in the conclusion, I have put in my uh, you know, thoughts, basis, my practical and pragmatic experience. Perhaps what could have been done? To avoid, uh, to avoid, and or to avoid the uh, you know collision or a case like this. The port of arrival that is for uh, ABS Hibiscus, which was outbound from Singapore Straits, was Lamchabang. That is intended, and the inbound vessel Hyundai Discovery, she was bound for Singapore, and the, both of, both the vessels were on international voyage and the container carriers. Now, the marine casualty information, the date and time, as I stated earlier, was 11 December 2011 and it took place at 0756 hours local time. The type of uh, marine casualty, it is a uh, serious marine casualty, of course. I, it, it is like, you know, the omnipresence of it uh, can be uh, seen uh, in the video as well as in the slides and uh, the pictures what I had shown for both the vessels, the damages what uh, both the vessels sustained. The location of this incident was 8 nautical miles east-northeast of the state of Eastern Singapore Strait Traffic Separation Scheme. Injuries and fatalities to the crew, luckily which is a good thing, was nil. No one was injured, no one was, no, uh, none of the crew on both the vessels were injured, that's a very good thing. The damage to the environmental impact, that is only the structural damage and no damage to the environment, which is also like, you know, it was contained or it never happened, which was a good thing. Uh, now, what were the factors that, you know, when this uh, accident took place, first and foremost, uh, it was a very heavy rain, as you know that, you know, in this area, sometimes you get to get torrential rains or heavy rains in which the visibility becomes uh, absolutely, practically speaking, zero. So, we'll talk about it as it is stated in the report, respectively. Uh, heavy rain was encountered by both the vessels, that is, uh, they were in the vicinity of 8 nautical miles east-northeast of the Straits of Eastern Singapore's uh, uh, Strait Traffic Separation Scheme. Uh, the number of, uh, you know, persons on board that is, on the first vessel, uh, uh, ACS Hibiscus were 20, 21, and on uh, Hyundai Discovery, there were 28 people on board, or the crew on board. Now, let's talk about the synopsis. The container vessel, uh, the container ships, ACS Hibiscus and Hyundai Discovery collided in the eastern approaches to the Singapore Straits on 11th December 2011. Visibility at uh, this point of time was restricted by localized heavy rain. Both vessels officers on, of watch took action to avoid the collision only after they saw the other vessel emerge from the rain shower as close, uh, at close range. This was too late to be effective. Both vessels were severely damaged. Nobody was injured and no pollution was reported, as what we stated earlier in the previous slide. But the action taken by both the duty officers, in this case, it happened to be chief officers watch on both the vessels. Actions by both vessels was basically too little and too late. The UK registered vessel uh, Hyundai Discovery was inbound to the Singapore and the uh, Panamanian registered ACS Hibiscus was outbound from Singapore. The bridge watches on both vessels were being kept by the chief officers. ACS Hibiscus chief officer 
unaware of Hyundai Discovery's course and position, turned his vessel to north to follow his planned route. We'll see that in the chart. He did not check that it was safe, whether it was safe to turn before he began to alter the course. Despite severe radio warnings from Hyundai Discovery, the chief officer of ACS Hibiscus continued to turn his vessel into Hyundai Discovery. In other words, what was the situation which we'll see in the next slides that uh, Hyundai Discovery was bow inbound towards the Singapore Straits in the South China Sea. She was coming on a, on a you know, southwesterly coast on a coast approximately of uh, 209. And uh, AC Sibiscus was outbound initial course of her was 049. And thereafter, at one point of time, once she was supposed to clear the Singapore Straits and come into the open water, she was supposed to alter the course of 350 as per her. Uh, passage plan or, or as per her uh, route plan. But the main point of contention is that when we talk about lookout, the rule number five says every vessel shall at all time maintain a proper lookout by sight hearing as well as by all available, available means appropriate in the prevailing, prevailing circumstances so as to make a complete appraisal and the risk of collision. So there had been a departure on lots of things which we'll talk about. This is just a gist of it, what I just mentioned. Background to the investigation. Now there are a lot of other factors. Uh, I will not comment on it, but I've just you know, highlighted for all the viewers to to try to understand like what uh, what could have been uh, you know could have perhaps transpired. This investigation was carried out jointly between UK, United Kingdom, and UK Marine Accident Investigation Branch, that is MAIB, and the Panamanian Maritime Authority, PM. It was conducted in accordance with the International Maritime Organization Code of International Standards and recommended practices for safety uh, investigation into marine casualty or marine incident, that is casualty investigation, Code Annex A. PMA agreed that the UK would act as a lead investigating state. The vessel owners, now this is what, what I've highlighted, just pay attention on to this and you see what you make out of it. The vessel owners denied MAIB inspector access to the Panamania registered vessel ACS Hibiscus which at, this, uh, at the time was lying outside the MAIB's jurisdiction. Similarly, the MAIB was denied access to ACS Hibiscus voice data recorder, VDR. The PMA was not willing to contradict the owner's instruction and did not require that they gave MAIB access to the primary sources of evidence. Now that is where I put my, you know, little comment, the credibility and credentials of the flag state. Now how it is to be construed and what you can make out of it, just try to look into it. Perhaps you may have to do a little introspect. Consequently, this report has been prepared based on the evidence gathered by the MAIB inspectors from the Hyundai discovery and the report from the PMA on the circumstances on board ACS Hibiscus at the time of the accident. Now, what was the ambiguity in this? I, I believe you all the mariners would be able to basically introspect, but end of the day, the crux of the matter is that why did this collision took place? What was happening today? Today, when I say that, you know, we have uh, all the kind of state of art equipment on board, be it egg disk, AIS, your VDR, you have everything. What we did not have at least 40 years ago when I joined C, I recall my own, my own uh, you know, good days. But here we have everything. But what is the thing which is actually making, you know, there have been so many collisions, groundings, and you know so many accidents and incidents as far as the safety of navigation is concerned because of the human error even after 
we have been provided with the state of the art equipment egg disk and you know all those things of course it is mainly because of the over reliance of the navigator on the electronic navigation without you know not using his sense and or not optimizing the usage of the electronic aids to navigation to take it into their advantage the timings uh, and navigation data were taken from Hyundai discovery vdr which included a recording of ais data or uh, for acs hemiscus now now to go through it the approaches to singapore Strait as what we mentioned so i will not read through it but you can go through it when you see the video the regional i will basically highlight all the important aspects the regional climate and the weather the admiralty sailing directions from malacca Straits and west coast of sumatra np 44 annex b states the the mean uh, annual rainfall is abundant Heavy showers and thunderstorms are responsible for most of the rain and the visibility is generally good except in the thunder showers when the visibility may fall to near fog limits. Now this is a thing which has been taken from NP44 like uh, sailing directions. Now at that, that point in time when this accident took place what were the environmental conditions we look into it because this is what it was factually when this collision took place the weather and the tidal conditions at the time of accident were visibility around two cables now this is what uh, you know the points to ponder so visibility was around two cables weather heavy rain charts when beaufort force five east northeast and tidal flow was west southwest 1.7 knots. Now, here also I've highlighted a few things when we talk about the key personnel for AC's hibiscus. It says Master uh, was a 43 year old South Korean and held a Panamanian standards of training, certification, and watchkeeping STCW 2 slash 2 certificate of competency COC and had sailed as master for 10 years he had been on board acs hibiscus for two months mark this underline what i have underscored here hi the master of acs hibiscus had sailed as master for 10 years so that therefore he was you know quite uh, uh experienced master with 10 years uh, you know under his belt we will compare this with the other vessel that is hyundai discovery the chief officer of AC Hibiscus was old Filipino, uh, chief, uh, 42 year old Filipino chief officer, had been a watchkeeper for previous 16 years and he had held STCW 2 by 2 COC and had sailed as chief officer for the last four years. So here we know the, the matrix C time, the actual C time of master and the chief officer, the key person. And of course, third officer who had been on board for three months, and AB, <coughs> uh, 24 year old uh, Filipino lookout held, etc. That is fine. Also, AB had been on board for three months. Now we look at the other side of uh, when we talk about uh, Hyundai Discovery. Now, Hyundai Discovery, when I talk about, when I look at this report, says Master 45 year old Bulgarian Master held a in STCW 2 by 2 COC, he had worked uh, for 21 years and with Zodiac for previous 8 years, he had been on board for over a month. Now, when I compare this and this, even for the chief officer, 34 year old Russian chief officer held STCW 2 by 1 COC, he had worked at sea for 8 years, all of which were with Zodiac. He had been on board for 5 months. So, don't you see something missing here? That is the reason I put here. Nothing is mentioned as far as the rank experience of the master and the chief officer is concerned in this case. However, when I go back to the previous slide, <coughs> it has been mentioned that the master had been in command for at least approximately over, over two years, uh, over 10 years, my uh, apology. The master had sailed as a master for over 10 years. That is his the rank experience as a master. And the chief officer 
had been chief officer for last four years. So they had pretty handsome, you know, kind of a experience, especially master 10 years is fairly experienced master. But when I come to the Hyundai discovery, I don't find that information at all anywhere in the report. So I leave it to you. I leave it to your uh, uh, judgment. How do you construe? See what is happening. End of the day, there are lots of things, you know, litigation, uh, etc., which take place. But from our mariners' perspective, we, as I said in the, at the beginning of my lecture, the due diligence shall be exercised at all times, and the prudence towards the safety of navigation is is paramount. It is imperative because had you know something been done probably we would have not been doing or I would have not been broadcasting this report. Therefore that is the reason I have mentioned nothing is mentioned as far as the rank experience of the master and the chief officer is concerned. I leave it for the viewers to understand. I am not here to give any verdict. I am just trying to broadcast how it is. However it uh, how it has been narrated or how the report has been there. But yes end of the day I will put in my uh, suggestion based my experience that perhaps what could have been done to avoid these kind of uh, situations or avoid the collisions like this. Now, as we speak, uh, ACS Hibiscus was outbound from Singapore Strait on a course of 049 with a speed of 14 decimal 5 knots. At this point in time, Hyundai Discovery was also inbound with a course of 203 degrees and with a speed of 20 knots. And this is the place where the collision took place. Now, when we talk about rule number six, safe speed and all that, you will understand yourself that why these things were not exercised. Because if uh, the vessel is doing uh, Hyundai Discovery doing 20 knots, then obviously, as I can understand, she is probably not on a maneuvering arc. And looking at likewise, you see Sebiscus, probably she is trying to gear up, rev up her engines. You know, even under the circumstances where the visibility is getting deteriorated. And at final leg, what has been narrated or what has been, uh, you know, uh, put through uh, from the factual point of view in the MAIB report, the visibility was 2K, which is absolutely, practically speaking, I would take it as zero visibility. So, the thing was that ACS Hibiscus. She was on a course of 049 and thereafter she was supposed to alter on a course of 350. By the way, just to also share with you that ACS Hibiscus <coughs> was using paper charts and uh, Hyundai Discovery had uh, approved class up to Agdis. So this is a paper chart from ACS Hibiscus where she was supposed to go 049 and then at this point in time she was supposed to alter her course to 350. Now that is where the problem started. Where the ACS Hibiscus chief officer did not realize, did not pay heed to the traffic, what is happening, you know, around him. He was just probably very much uh, homed on to uh, coming to the alteration and uh, he started altering to 350 without realizing that <coughs> he is finally running into or cutting through or cutting the bow of the ACS Hibiscus, uh, uh, Hyundai Discovery at a very close range. So ACS Hibiscus course alteration point that is that this is the place he was supposed to alter the course as per the route plan. Now this is the ECDIS screenshot from uh, uh, Hyundai Discovery ECS showing the position of ACS Hibiscus and Hyundai Discovery at 0744. Mind you the collision took place at 0756 hours. So at this point in time, uh, ACS Hibiscus was going nice and easy. Probably if she had sighted this or spotted her on radar, I can understand because of the heavy rainstorm, the visibility would obviously was reduced and there was too much clutter on the uh, radar's PPI. But then it has to be, it should have been tuned well to at least, uh, you know, get uh, the long range and the short range scanning which is a normal practical knowledge of the seamanship that you keep one radar on a smaller scale, one on a, you know, other one. Like uh, in this case, one radar perhaps could have been kept on three miles range, other one could have been kept on six miles range. And, uh, you know, once the radar is tuned, these are all marine radars. And when the marine radars are tuned well, 
you definitely will be able to spot a target, especially a bigger target like this Hyundai Discovery, which was a bigger vessel. You certainly will not be able to miss it if you tune your radar correctly. So, this is the situation at 0744 hours. At 0747 hours, this is the situation, ECS Hibiscus and Hyundai Discovery, how they are moving. At 0750 hours, see how they are moving. This is ABS Hibiscus. She was going nice and easy on a, you know, course of 049. It is after this when she started altering course to her next stipulated course as what I've shown you in the slide over here that she had her you know next course as per the route plan was 350 and that is where the problem started you know uh, coming in so until 0750 if she was going okay probably CPA was okay and now the problem begins when ACS hibiscus starts altering her course to port without realizing that there's a bigger container vessel on her port bow and you are in both of them were in restricted visibility and without exercising any due diligence and prudence towards the safety of navigation the ACS hibiscus chief officer as per the report kept on altering the course to her port even after it admonishing Hyundai Discovery Chief Officer or Hyundai Discovery Chief uh, Jury Officer admonished the ACS Hibiscus Chief Officer that you are don't alter course to port we are coming at a closer range but probably he did not pay any heats the ACS Hibiscus Chief Officer was very much home into alteration of his course maintaining her you know vessel on the track however if he had spotted her. Now, I can understand as what I said earlier that yes, probably radars were not tuned. The optimization of electronic navigation was not used or there was no knowledge how to use it or how to optimize it. Perhaps if the one of the radar would have been kept at 3 miles range, other one at 6 miles range and tuned well, one at short range scanning, other at long range scanning and 100% I'm sure because uh, you know, you can't miss uh, such a close target, such a bigger target, especially at a closer range. Probably if he had spotted her and if he had tuned his radar, uh, that is the Chief Officer Hibiscus and Chief Officer Hyundai Discovery both, they would have been able to avert the situation. Or at, you know, worst case scenario, when Hyundai Discovery Chief Officer realized that he is not taking action, the Hyundai Discovery would have altered her course to starboard, as I can see on the AIS, uh, on the uh, on the egg disc uh, snapshot, there is no target on the Hyundai Discovery starboard side as well. But no, he maintained his course. Maybe he altered few degrees to starboard. That is Hyundai Discovery. But again, this, this that's the reason I stated it was too little and too late. <coughs> because <clears throat> at this point in time, both the vessels have landed in a close quarter situation. So this is the time. At 0755 decimal 50, in other words, 0756 approximately, both the vessels collided as per the egg disk uh, screenshot of Hyundai Discovery. And this is the second follow up video that is after collision 0756 uh, decimal 10 seconds. This was the situation both the vessels were united when the, or the, collided when the visibility was barely two cables and uh, what it has culminated into basically a lot of losses to the property that is for ACS Hibiscus and Hyundai Discovery respectively. Now we come to a kind of uh, not a conclusion but I always give this kind of uh, you know heads up that there is the points which we should ponder of course there was a departure or non-compliance of coal rigs wide rule number two three five six seven eight nineteen and thirty five that is number two is responsibilities number three journal uh, definitions number five lookout number six safe speed number seven risk of collision number eight action to avoid collision number 19 conduct a vessel in the restricted visibility and number 35 sound signals in the restricted visibility of course we all know the rules of course most of us uh, know it by heart 
So I'm not going to go into the rules, but I'm basically trying to home on and highlight the aspect of practical knowledge of the seamanship. So first and foremost, non-compliance of the Code Rex rules number 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 19 and 35. Number 2, the fatigue. As per the report, when the vessel departed Singapore, that is for ACS Hibiscus, the chief officer did his <coughs> normal cargo duties and he came on the bridge immediately after the vessel sailed out. Probably he was not well rested. That could be one of the factor, factor because, you know, most of the times besides the human error, it also is fatigue. When the duty officer is not well rested, that can also be a major factor as far as the uh, you know, collision, or, collision or incident or accidents which take place. So fatigue is also one of the factor. Uh, from the chief officer uh, of ACS Hibiscus perspective because as it is mentioned in the report that chief officer immediately came up on the bridge <coughs> after doing his deck duties and after stations etc directly on the bridge. Number three, the bridge watch level compliance was not there whenever the vessel is you know going or passing or traversing through the critical passage the watch level shall be heightened to the bridge watch level 2 or 3 as per the master's jurisdiction. Then number 4 as what I stated earlier for uh, Hyundai Discovery nothing was mentioned as far as the rank experience of the key personnel especially master and chief officer is concerned. Again critical passage parameters where you have you know You've raised the bridge watch level to level 2 or level 3 as applicable was not in compliance because as per the report master was hopping up and down even during the restricted visibility and that was for both the business. And of course practical knowledge and seamanship. The practical knowledge what I said earlier the radars, the uh, ECTIS uh, especially for Hyundai Discovery who was well equipped. And even the ACS Episcus, she had also her radars and everything working, all the navigational equipment working. There was no uh, non conformity as far as the navigational equipment was concerned. There was no optimization, and there was basically, you know, like it's like going like a, like a, you know, like a pigeon that you see in one direction, you don't see what is happening around you, and in particular, in this case, in particular, ACS Hibiscus chief officer kept on altering his course from 049 to 350 without realizing or without hearing a sound signal of uh, uh, Hyundai Discovery. As per uh, rule number five, he was basically more interested in altering the course to his port even after being admonished by Hyundai Discovery chief officer. And he relayed uh, the message over VHF that while uh, to ACS Hibiscus, why you're altering course to port, you're coming in close range, you're crossing my bow, it's a restricted visibility, we are coming in close quarter situation, no each for pain. Number one. Number two, if Hyundai Discovery Chief Officer realized that yes, we are coming at close quarter range, and mind you, at that point in time, the Hyundai Discovery was doing 20 knots. Now, one thing I fail to understand when you're traversing in the critical passage. Perhaps the engine should have been kept standby at maneuvering. If Hyundai Discovery herself would have reduced the speed provided if she was on a maneuvering RPM or and or altering course to a starboard, she had almost everything clear as it is cited on the disk snapshot. She could have alone managed to avert the situation if she had given hard a starboard turn around and come astern of the uh, ACS Hibiscus perhaps this situation would have not uh, you know uh, been uh, the way it is uh, how it is as per the report. So that is what I talk about the practical knowledge of the seamanship where today unfortunately it's very sad to say even after having all those state of the art equipment on the bridge people do not realize the strain and mind you when we joined C we were taught from the basics because when you talk about the basics if your basics are correct you will be able to cap, you know capitalize or you know recapitulate and you know uh, will have a better head reach that 
eyes are your best radars you know that is in good visibility and all that and brain is your best computer and when you have a coordination of this you can make all, you know you, you can make the best out of uh, it along with <coughs> harmonizing the usage of the electronic navigation because this brain is the one which has made these computers which we are using today why do we undermine that and again the over reliance upon the electronic aids which i have already mentioned so these are the points which i would i could think uh, which we need to basically you know home on to and be very particular not to have over reliance on the electronics that is the reason even when you talk about the position fixing today we have gps and everything good old days four decades ago we did not have gps of course you still need to carry out the cross check of the gps position with the land fixes etc so there has to be a cross check provision available navigational aids all electronic aids they are boom yes provided you must know how to use them number two you must also use your practical knowledge of seamanship and that is a mantra that is the thing which i am trying to put forward okay ladies and gentlemen <clears throat> thank you very much please come back to me with your findings with your comments and i'll keep on broadcasting these kind of lectures more and more to help and facilitate our, our mariners thank you very much good day stay safe